the suburban regional shopping mall. In a single location, shoppers can visit over a hundred stores, go to a movie, eat, walk and lounge for an entire day in a secure and pleasant atmosphere, sheltered from undesirable weather and the demands of everyday life. Most Americans have hung out at the mall for an entire day and felt uplifted in spirit by the experience. Few of us can remember a time when shopping was a trip to downtown. Regional shopping centers are primarily a post-World War II phenomenon. Their growth was fueled by a post-war baby boom, a widespread shift of population from the city to suburbia, highway construction, increased car ownership, rising incomes, and a need for retail stores near to the newly created suburban residences outside the central city. At its inception, the suburban regional shopping mall was designed to be a substitute or even a replacement for a city's central business district. In the 50s, such malls were small by today's standard for a regional mall. Southdale Center, which is located in suburban Minneapolis, is considered to be the first enclosed regional mall with multiple anchors. Southdale's original two department store anchors were Dayton's and Donaldson's. The 800,000 square foot mall also featured 70 retail tenants. Southdale opened in 1956 and served as the model for most of the suburban regional malls built over the following three decades. In addition to regional and super regional malls, numerous types of centers have evolved since the 50s. The International Council of Shopping Centers has defined eight principal shopping center types. A neighborhood center is usually a straight line strip with either a supermarket or drugstore anchor and other service or convenience oriented stores. A neighborhood shopping center usually consists of 30 to 100,000 square feet of GLA gross leasable area. Uh, the average size of your neighborhood shopping center is generally around 50,000 square feet. The reason that neighborhood and community shopping centers have flourished over the last 20 years most households are two-income households. Uh, we no longer, as a family, have time. And so we're all about convenience. And the data shows that people shop where they live. A community center may be a straight line, L or U-shaped, with a wider range of stores than a neighborhood center. A regional or super-regional center is usually an enclosed mall with multiple anchor stores, and inline specialty stores connected by a common walkway or mall. Super regionals are larger than regional malls and have more anchor stores. Both sell general merchandise with an emphasis on apparel. A fashion specialty center is comprised of upscale apparel shops, boutiques, and craft shops carrying unique fashion merchandise. It will have restaurants and other types of entertainment. A power center consists of freestanding power retailers, such as category killers, superstores, warehouse clubs, and large discount stores. The strip in Canton, Ohio features a number of category killers and superstores. A theme, festival center, has a unifying theme that is architecturally carried out by all the stores and facilities in the center, and to some extent by the merchandise. These centers offer lots of restaurants and entertainment and attract tourists. Festival Bay, located in Orlando, Florida, is designed to reflect Florida's upbeat, upscale lifestyle. Its anchor tenants include Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World, Cinemark Twentyplex Movie Theater, Van Skate Park, and Ron John Surf Shop. Specialty stores in Festival Bay also carry out the Florida theme. Kahunaville, Hilo Hatties, and Shepler's. An outlet center is usually located in a rural or tourist area and consists mostly of manufacturers outlet stores selling merchandise at a discount. They are usually open-air centers. There are now over 4,000 such malls across the United States. Chief consumer are women that are between 25 and 54 years old. It's because of the national brand product that we offer and is successful because of the selection that we have and also of the fantastic prices we have. Prices are 20 to 40 percent off 
of the regular retail prices that you see in the regional malls. So the reason that outlet centers can do that is because we sell direct from the manufacturer. This means that we eliminate the middleman and uh, pass the savings along to our consumer. In 2002, there were a total of 46,336 shopping centers in the United States, of which about 1,200 would be considered regional or super-regional malls. The suburban regional shopping mall and their department store anchors enjoyed great success for almost 50 years. However, in the final decade of the 20th century, they began to experience problems which have challenged the most astute of mall developers and managers. When interest rates got to be very high, when uh, length of construction time got to be so long, the large developers started focusing some of their energies on neighborhood and community centers because it was a quicker return on their money. The project they could get in and get out quicker than taking four years, three years, and the availability of ground. It was hard to find 35 acres of ground located in a central business district that you could develop, whereas going out and finding two or three acres on a corner uh, was much more plausible. All mature industries are characterized by high levels of competition, and the shopping center industry is no exception. All shopping centers have both direct and indirect competitors. Direct competitors are nearby shopping centers with either similar or dissimilar formats. Indirect competitors comprise other types of retail store sites, like freestanding or clustered sites, and non-store retail sites. Non-store retailing includes online shopping, catalog shopping, home TV shopping, telemarketing, and other forms of direct marketing, all of which have made considerable inroads into retail store sales. However, suburban regional shopping malls are more vulnerable than other types of malls to direct competition. Most of them were built during the 60s and 70s using a standardized design and layout. Within any given market area, shoppers might have the option of visiting at any one of four or five regional or super-regional malls, each with the same cookie-cutter image, anchor stores, and tenant mix. What's the solution? Basically, the solution lies in one of two general strategy options, be less expensive or be unique. Clearly, uh, the, the town center concept, as the one developed at Easton, is uh, in line with the future of where the industry is going. The developers are more and more becoming aware of the importance of quality architectural design. The second thing is we are seeing the beginnings of an integration of leisure time uses. Uh, that means the restaurants and the cinemas and entertainment uses, who in the past used to be left on the outside of malls, now they are being integrated more and more. Some malls have chosen differentiation through renovation or re-tenanting. Well, the objective of the renovation again was to, to bring the shopping center up to what we call current market conditions and take it from what was probably designed as original kind of park-like theme to instill what we hope is a feel of more casual elegance. And they're going to do that through not only the upgrade of the fixturing and the, the amenities in the shopping center, but use this as a platform to draw new tenants and better tenants into the mall. And often that's part of the objective of a renovation, is to make it a more appealing destination for the retailers in addition to the consumers who would come in the shopping mall. Oversupply of retail space has posed considerable problems to all shopping centers. Everyone agrees, even the retailers, that there are too many stores in America. The U.S. has 20 square feet for every man, woman, and child, compared to 1.4 square feet per person in Great Britain. Sales per square foot of retail space is declining in the U.S. In fact, revenue from retail sales is contracting. It grew an average of 2.5% in the 1970s, 1.3% in the 1980s, and only 0.8% in the 1990s adjusted for inflation. The result? Retail consolidation, store closings and bankruptcies, leaving shopping centers and malls fighting for a shrinking base of retail tenants. Department stores. The primary traffic generators for suburban regional shopping malls are experiencing serious competitive problems. 
Over the past two decades, department stores lost half their market share of the retail industry to discounters and specialty stores. To make matters worse, some department stores have made a point of locating outside suburban regional shopping malls. Can regional and super regional malls live without department stores? Uh, anchor stores are pivotal to the success of a shopping center. Um, to use the analogy, those are they're the engine that pulls the train um, because they draw the traffic. They have great uh, advertising budgets that they use to draw customers to the shopping center. And department stores have been, are, and will continue to be very important to the success of shopping centers. Retailing is very fluid, and, and we look at it as, a, as an opportunity. When one retailer misses the mark with the customer uh, and goes empty, there's an opportunity for another retailer to come in. We've had the example here at Greenwood Park Mall, a former Montgomery Wards is now occupied by Von Maurer, a department store that's very cutting edge in terms of providing fashion forward uh, garments to its customers and also has a great amount of customer service that makes sure they're close to their customers. And they've been terrifically successful. We've seen that at this mall. We're bringing on a Dick Sporting Goods to take over service merchandise that went out of business. So we view it as an evolving type of business plan where if one retailer goes out, we've got another concept that's ready to go that is even closer to the customer and should be better fit. The model of the project that, that is being developed in downtown Louisville, the anchor is the right collection of three or four restaurants um, or entertainment venues that create the anchor. The anchor becomes um, the destination as opposed to a specific department store and in the, the destination is it's got to be unique to the area. It has to feel genuine. So what makes it important in a development stage is, is to put together a collection of the right users. Changes in consumers and their shopping behavior are a major factor which underlies the woes of suburban regional shopping malls. Compared to the early 1980s, shoppers are visiting regional shopping malls less frequently, visiting fewer stores when they do shop, and are spending less time per visit. However, shoppers are more likely to make a purchase when they do visit a mall. These statistics imply that shopping has become much more purpose-driven and less leisure-oriented. Uh, we look to do many things to assist our customer in having the best experience they can have at our properties. And we do that on many levels, some of which they see and some of which they may not notice, but their services are still there. For instance, in our shopping centers, we have a centralized assignment marketplace. And at the marketplace, we're able to offer services to the consumers. We have kitchen clubs to appeal to families. Uh, we sell gift cards and gift certificates to make it easier for customers to find something that they give people in a hurry. We provide the portal through Simon.com for customers to click on that, get information about where our mall properties are nearby them, what stores are featured in those malls, and even to click through to those mall websites. Security and safety is paramount to our organization and we maintain um, active relationships with security providers and also in-house providers to make sure that our officers are on patrol inside and outside, that they can be easily found. That's why our officers are in uniforms, our vehicles are well marked. The typical regional mall is not designed to facilitate comparison shopping, shopping convenience and efficiency. What's the solution? One strategy which has been suggested is called zonal merchandising. In Easton we are using what today is called zonal merchandising. That means that uh, tenants who appeal to the same category of customers are grouped together. Customer wants convenience today. Any system who subliminally is irritating to a customer is not a good thing to do. The old thinking in malls was that by spreading similar uses, you would force the customer to walk to one end of the mall to the other, and that, that way forcing him to browse across other merchants in order to increase maybe his uh, cross-shopping. We believe that that time is over. Uh, there are many trends today who go against that. Number one, shopping is not anymore a necessity. People buying merchandise, they see it as something they have to do as effectively as possible. Buying merchandise, this is not the 1950s, pent-up demand for material goods. I mean, they wear a pair of jeans, we need a pair of jeans, I and mean, we don't want to complicate our lives. 
and basically that's what the zonal merchandise allows. Food courts and shopping malls represent the most prevalent application of zonal merchandising. Group eating and drinking places in the same area facilitates both comparison shopping and cross-shopping between eateries. Food courts are very important, or at least food is very important, if you will, uh, to drawing customers to the shopping center and holding them while they're here. And that's an important element of a shopping center renovation, is making sure that the overall environment that we create for our consumers and our shoppers that come to our shopping centers um, makes them feel comfortable, makes them want to stay with us, and makes us, of course, want to come back. An alternative strategy which has been proposed for turning around the traditional suburban regional shopping malls is adding entertainment within the center. The rationale behind this idea is to add value to a shopper's visit to a mall and to give shoppers additional reasons to shop at a mall rather than at home. Entertainment can run the gamut from simply play areas for children, restaurants and movie theaters, to video arcades and virtual golf courses to a full-scale amusement park such as the Mall of America. Some industry analysts suggest that the key to revitalizing the suburban regional shopping mall is to make the shopping experience itself more exciting. The Easton Town Center in Columbus, Ohio is an example of a suburban regional shopping center that was explicitly designed to provide shoppers with a fun, exciting, entertaining place to shop. There are three main characteristics who distinguishes uh, a town center type uh, design for a shopping mall versus a traditional mall. The three main characteristics are the backbone of a project like this is the common areas of the project. That is the design of the squares, the streets, the sidewalks, the fountains, the plazas is what is the backbone of this project. Everything articulates around that. That is the anchor of the project. The second characteristic of a project like this is that it integrates in it a very strong component of leisure time uses compared to a say regional mall. It has cinemas, it has cabarets, it has comedy clubs, it had nightclubs, it has multiple bars and a big number of restaurants. The third main characteristic of a project like Eastern Town Center is the fact that uh, it is a mixed-use development where all the other uses, whether they are office uses, hospitality uses or residential uses, are urbanistically connected to the project's design. For suburban regional shopping malls to enjoy continued success, they must adapt to changes in their environment. Changes in the macro environment such as socio-cultural and economic. Changes in competition and changes in buyer behavior. Consider Rolling Acres Mall in Akron, Ohio. It has more than one million square feet, including five department store anchors. It was a thriving mall when it was first built. Rolling Acres, when it was built in 1974, it was a really bustling mall. You couldn't even hardly get a parking space. I mean, on Sat Friday and Saturday nights, there was all kinds of kids and stuff, and this was the, basically the meeting place back then. But Rolling Acres now has only a 50% occupancy rate and is trying to attract tenants with reduced rent, free utilities and other special deals. Across the street, many businesses have either gone out of business or left for other locations. Opinions differ on the problems Rolling Acres Mall failed to overcome. But competition from nearby regional malls that were renovated, competition from new shopping centers with different formats, crime and mismanagement were important factors. The lesson to be learned is that change is a certainty. To be successful over the long run, organizations must adapt or suffer the consequences. Growth or birth uh, happens also by replacement of death. The growth is not going to be in quantity, it's going to be in quality. And so the growth is going to be in capturing those trends and either integrating them in existing malls or transforming them to respond to that need.